Day 16. Welcome to day 16 of Vlogmas. Um, as you can tell by the bright lights, I'm filming in the kitchen and it's dark outside. It's very early in the morning. I am heading to work. Can you tell? Yeah, I'm heading to work. Um, I'm hoping to get Vlogmas back on track. David is home! Yay! David came home last night. He's feeling a lot better. Not great. Um, it's for those major coughing fits, but the antibiotics are working, fantastic. So he is home for Christmas. I'm gonna get him working. He can't work around the house, he can't do the ironing, he can't do the school run, but I'm hoping he can sit and do some vlogmas. There's no reason why he can't sit in front of a laptop, it's less. No, my thoughts exactly. So I'm heading to work, I'm having to get everything done so the school uniforms are all sorted. I'm just sorting out the pat lunch, sorting out my own pat lunch and I need to leave in 10 minutes. So I'm just recording this quickly. I have then got a 14 hour shift ahead of me. Yay, lucky me. Yeah, 14 hour shift ahead of me. So I'm hoping that David's gonna pop in a nice pre-recorded thing that I did the other day. Um, yeah, so I made some hot chocolate spoons the other day um, and yeah, just want you to watch along and hopefully make and let me know if you enjoy them. We really like them, not a chance to drink them yet. The plan was movie night, Christmas movies, hot chocolate over the weekend, but yeah, with David being in hospital, those plans were a little bit, uh, yeah. So I'm rambling now and need to crack on. I've got lots to do before I head to work in 10 minutes. So I hope you enjoy this um, Vlogmas. And yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for all your help and your support and all your well wishes. It's been really appreciated. So take care and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. So as you guys will have seen, I am on my way to work. Yeah. So I decided to do this pre-recorded little bit for you. As you don't want to see me go to work for 14 hours and sit in the car while I work, because I certainly can't take you in there. So I decided to do this pre-recorded bit. And today we are going to be making some hot chocolate spoons. Now, a few years ago, I decided to come up with, sorry, it really hurts. I need some arm strength. So a few years ago, I decided to try and make some extra money to see if I could do another little business. Um, just as a, a sideline, just to see what happened because it's something that I've always fancied doing. So I decided to try and set up like Maker's Market, little mini stall to see what would happen. I started it one Christmas. I think I did it for about two Christmases in total and then I stopped. So basically, we're a little company called Pop and Spoon. We had great advertising, thanks to David, great little business cards, but it was just too much hard work. So I sold things like fudge, homemade fudge that I made myself, um, and these um, hot chocolate spoons, um, homemade chocolates, and lots of other little bits that we did along the way. Um, but yeah, it was quite popular, it was quite successful. I am no Alan Sugar, I'm certainly not a businesswoman. I just spent money, didn't calculate what was going in, going out. I didn't have enough time. I was still working full time and yeah, the more obviously I looked into it, the more that it became more stressful. Insurance, hygiene certificates, the council, etc. Um, so yeah, I just, it was something I decided that it wasn't worth it. To set up a little business like that, I needed an extra space, not to be done in my own kitchen. So yeah, I decided not to do it. But I still do make the odd bits and pieces. I make thing, um, fudge for Christmas presents and these hot chocolate spoons. The fudge will be in another vlog. I wasn't going to do it this year, but I've had a big demand at work. Diane, you're making your fudge this year. We need it. We need it. So I'm going to be making some fudge as well. Um, yeah, so the hot chocolate spoons it is today. So I want to show you how simple it is to make them. 
Um, it's a little prop the hot chocolate spoons you see in the shops. Um, this one is just probably a pure chocolate. It's slightly different. I don't know if the recipes are the same, but it's my take on it and it works really well. And it's great Christmas presents. Homemade Christmas presents are fantastic. So it's great if you've got kids. They can make it really easily and they can give it to their friends as gifts and it's really cheap. Really cheap to make. So come on and watch with me. So this is basically all that you need to make hot chocolate spoons. It's really quite straightforward. You need some dark chocolate. I think the better the quality, the better the, the better the hot chocolate, but it depends on you how like you like your flavours. The first time I ever tried it, I just used this um, chocolate from Aldi, so it's a dark chocolate. You need some giant white chocolate buttons, some mini, mini marshmallows, you need an ice cube tray, and then you need some spoons. So I have got loads of wooden spoons, if anybody wants one drop a comment and I can send you some because I've still got loads left over. Any spoons will do, plastic, um, if you want to reuse your own then do it but obviously you can't get them back until you've eaten the hot chocolate, well drank the hot chocolate. Um, you'll need a pan and a, bowl, a glass bowl for the Bain Marie and obviously you'll need a spoon. So the ice cube tray, I really can't remember where I picked it up from but I thought it was the perfect shape. Um, it needs thoroughly washing and drying because if there's any sort of water in it then it will obviously affect how the chocolate um, comes out and how it looks when it's um, set. So these are the ones I picked up. So today we're going to be just making plain hot chocolate. So in the past I have made things like chocolate orange, um, just mixing some chocolate orange. I have made coffee flavours so I've literally just put coffee in with the chocolate. Um, so that's a bit of a mocha, so you can make all sorts of different flavours. So let's get started. Don't forget, get your grown ups to help you. So for those of you that don't know what a bain-marie is, it's literally a bowl of boiling water, sorry, a pan of boiling water, I don't know what one is, a pan of boiling water with a glass bowl over the top, pop it on the stove and then just gently you put things in that you need to melt. That simple. Wish me luck. So I can't remember how much I used to make and how much weight it used to be. So does that make any sense? So I've got 400 grams of dark chocolate and let's just see how many we make. So I'm gonna, I've already pre-chopped it all and I am basically throwing it in and melting it all. There's nothing complex about this. Nothing I do is complex apart from the fudge. Now the fudge is a different battle altogether. So you need to make sure that you don't burn the chocolate so the water shouldn't be touching the bottom, bottom of the bowl. And then you just basically melt the chocolate. Now this looks incredible. And just keep stirring it. If the kids want to help you make it, obviously really help them with this bit because the bowl is so hot. So the better the chocolate is, the more um, prettier it looks at the end of it. So if you're using a more refined chocolate, so I used to use like cacao tablet, like, I can't remember what I used to use. Anyway, I used to use proper chocolate chips um, with pretty much 70%, 80% chocolate in it and it just used to make you have a really glossy finish. Also, if you want to be a bit more finesse about it, the temperature at which you do it at and add in extra. So you're supposed to melt some chocolate and then th uh, add in cold chocolate and melt that separately and it creates more of a, a glossy finish on the product. But if you're just giving it to gifts as family and not selling it anywhere or anything like that, I would probably just re recommend this method. It's just quite quick and simple and straightforward. Apologies if you can hear funny sound. It is absolutely chucking it down outside right now. So it's a good job I didn't go for a run this afternoon. So the chocolate is almost all melted. So I am gonna take it off the hob right now. Let me just show you. 
Wish you had smell vision it smells incredible right now. So I'm just going to keep stirring it until it is completely melted. I'm going to take it off here. Mind your hands, go to the steam. Move that out of the way. I'm going to angle you down a little bit so you can actually see what I am doing. So as you can see, there are still some lumps and bumps in it right now. So just keep stirring it until there's not as many lumps in it. And try and let it cool down a little bit. You don't want piping hot chocolate. So it's at this bit now that if you're trying to make a more finished glaze, you would just add some cold chocolate into it and then just gradually melt it to bring down the temperature of the chocolate. It's called tempered chocolate. Yeah, I feel like I needed proper classes to be able to do this. So once it's all mixed in, you can then start trying to do the good bit. It just needs to cool down a little bit. So I'm just going to let it cool down. So this is where the assembly bit comes together. I suggest you put your ice cube tray on a separate tray or a chopping board so that you can easily move them without actually having to move the tray, especially this one. It's all wobbly, so if I tried to move it, they'd all fall apart. Now bear with me, I have not made these for a long time, but I'm hoping it'll go well. Do these things ever go well when you're making them again? When making them first time? You're basically just spooning your chocolate into the ice cube trays. Now you want a good bit of chocolate in there. Good sized portion, because you want to make that hot chocolate really amazing. There we have it. So 400 grams of chocolate roughly makes, well, in my ice cube trays, about 15 hot chocolate spoons. So I'm just gonna try and tidy the edges up a bit. Unsuccessfully tidy the edges up a bit. Doesn't really matter though. So here comes the assembly part. So basically what I do is pop the spoons in. And there we go. So let me show you from the a different angle. So this is what they look like from that angle there. They're all just all nicely stood up. Mostly symmetrical. Then what I did is I just played around with different designs and different flavors. So I popped in a giant white chocolate button to add some extra sweetness. And for a bit of festive design, I popped that in there like that. There. So then I put them in all of them. But what I forgot is I now can't get to the middle ones. Error number one. But anyway, I will complete this bit and then I'll get back to you when I've done it. You can tell it's been quite a few years since I made these because obviously I shouldn't have put all the spoons in first. I did learn that the first time round of making them but obviously I've forgotten because it's been quite a few years. So as you can see all the chocolate buttons are nicely in there and they all still look very pretty. Now it's time to add some marshmallows. So what we used to do is we just used to put a couple of marshmallows in the top um, just for some extra sweetness. And who doesn't love a marshmallow in a hot chocolate? Just like that. So I'll catch you up 
again when I have done this bit. So there we go, that is what the finished hot chocolate spoon looks like while they're waiting to set. Yep, all the spoons, oh there's one missing. So all the spoons have got four marshmallows and some giant chocolate buttons. Oh, what's that one? One for me, one for the hot chocolate. So yeah, so that's the finished product. Now just to pop them in the fridge and let them set. Yeah, can't wait to start trying these again. So I'll show you what they're like when we have finished them. So here we are, here's the finished spoons. Um, it takes a couple of hours to set in the fridge and they look like this. To get them out, it's best to pop them at room temperature for a little bit and then just gently pop them out. So this is what the spoons look like. So how cool are these? They are so awesome. Yep, and they all pretty much look the same. There we go, some are thicker than others if you've not measured it out properly. You saw how I did it. So that's pretty much what they look like. So they look really awesome and they're fantastic gifts. You can get a little gift bag for people, put them in there. I would normally chuck in quite a few extra marshmallows and then tie it up with a nice bow and then just put a bit of instructions of how to do it. So that's how we used to do it with Pop and Spoon. If I find a picture, they will put it in. It's gonna kill me now for saying that. So all you do with these is you get a some warm milk. So either heat it up in the microwave or old fashioned on the stove. Heat up your milk, stick in your spoon and stir. And it makes the most amazing hot chocolates. Um, you might even see that on one of our later vlogs. So that's it. Really straightforward and simple. I really hope you enjoyed watching this one. Um, just a quick short one, like I said, because I'm obviously at work, because this is pre-recorded. Um, so don't forget to, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click that like and subscribe button. And thanks for watching again, guys. Um, if you make any of these, then please leave a comment and see if you've enjoyed it. I would personally add some Baileys to it as well to make that extra special treat. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Happy Vlogmas.